Hi everyone, it's Beef here again. I'm making this quick little video because I was having a discussion on Twitter with Gents of Novo and a couple of other people. Now some individuals were claiming that it was physically impossible to get a Beraziki spawn, do you know that little fishing village up the northeast coast, in the rain and survive from that location. It was also claimed that it was actually impossible to get to a town from that location if it was raining because you would have hypothermia and starving at the same time and you would die before you even got to the town. Uh, most of you who know me will know that I like to disprove rumours and hearsay from anybody in the community. Now I'm not saying that this spawn is easy, it is tough and for new spawns it may well be a little too tough for them and I know the devs have said that they're probably going to relax the um, the rates which you get cold. It probably is a little bit too high. But the whole point of this video was to disprove a myth that you could not survive. So you can see the first thing that I did was make a stone knife. This is essential to surviving because you don't have time to look for axes or other sharp implements in order to get a fire going. Now I'm not hanging around in this fishing village, I could look at these um, buildings but time is of the essence. The most important thing here to remember is you're getting cold and you're getting hungry at the same time. So you need to travel somewhere where you know there is a food source. So the closest place to go is either to go to Svetlo or to go to Torovo and the apple trees there. It's perfectly fine to make assertions based on evidence. When I used to be a scientist, that was my job. I used to be a molecular geneticist for 15 years. And there's one thing that I don't like in the DAISY community is people making claims based on no evidence or actual facts at all, making hyperbole, making statements about how you die in just a few minutes in the rain. The fact of the matter is you don't. This whole video is super compressed and speeded up and it is over six minutes long. So as you will see from this spawn, I actually spawned to the west of uh, Beraziki and I had to make my way through the mountains and those big rocky areas to get there, so an actual Beraziki spawn would be even easier. Now this is my actual second attempt for survival here. I did die the first time, but I want to make something clear. The first time I actually spawned west of Svetlo, because it was difficult to get a spawn uh, at Beraziki in the rain on this server. So I actually ran through Svetlo, all the way across the docks, around the coast, and all the way around the coast to Beraziki, in the rain. Once I got to Beraziki, I had to make a, a fire because I was drenched and starting to get really cold. So I had to spend about, I don't know, three or four minutes in Beraziki, so I was getting hungry. Then I had to do this exact same run all the way up to Turovo. And I actually got there and started picking apples, but some zombies attacked me and I died at that point from the cold and from starvation. So I'm not claiming that this is easy by any means, but I can but I can categorically disprove the claims that if you get a Beraziki spawn in the rain, you cannot reach a town and you will die. As you can see, I'm already at the town here. It's tough, it's challenging. You will have to light a fire once you get to the town. Um, as you can see here, I'm lighting a fire inside the blue tin building because it wouldn't work underneath these overhanging um, lean-to structures. Surviving in the rain as a fresh bond is challenging. The first thing you should be doing is thinking about the equipment you'll need for a fire. So as soon as you spawn, you'll need a stone knife. You'll need to gather a long branch, put that on your back, stick your armband on your arm to give you a little bit of extra space, cut down some twigs and cut some bark. That means when you get to a location you can use the bark and the twigs to make a fire, light it with your flare and you're already getting warm. Now you'll be hungry when you get to this town so you're going to have to spam some apples. You can see here on the left hand side this is a fire that I dropped when I was getting attacked by zombies the first time. You'll also see that there's some chicken here. I actually found some chicken the first time. Um, I would have survived the first time if I had used the chicken but I wanted to prove that it was possible to survive only with a knife and uh, apples. I also found an axe the first time but I didn't use that either because not everybody will find an axe. Everybody can get a stone, everybody can cut down some twigs. So that's the bare minimum that I used to prove that you could survive. 
Now, instead of actually looting any of these houses, while I was here and alive, I wanted to test some various other positions to see where you could light a fire or where you couldn't. Now, it seems that there are some bugs just now. You should be able to light fires under trees, but I couldn't drop the fireplace. You should be able to light fires on the lean-tos, but there was issues. You should also be able to light fires in the smaller garages, but there was issues. I noticed that when I had the fire in my hand and tried to use the F key to place it on the ground, it wasn't working very much, so I need to test again to see if you can just drag it off your hands and light it. Some issues with fires that need to be fixed. Now, as we know, the fires in buildings are screwed just now, so that'll make it a bit easier again once we can make fires inside buildings. So I'm not making this video to prove that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. I just want everybody to be mindful of the fact that this is a survival game. In a survival game, do you think you should spawn and live forever every single time? I don't. I think it should be challenging. I think it should be tough. I think sometimes you should die quite early. There are many more survival games, single player ones, that you can buy which you will die. The point of the game is to try and live as many days as possible, but the environment kills you. We've never had a point in Daisy where the environment will actually do you a huge amount of damage. We're at that point now and we're going to lose it because too many people are complaining about it. There's actually so many different options that you can get to survive. If, for instance, I had used the axe that I found, I could have cut down logs which would have made the fire easier and better. The chicken that I found, I could have cooked that while I was on the fire and got energy, would have, would have survived the actual first attempt. I could have looted those houses and found a raincoat, then that would have negated my temperature requirements. I could have just focused on food. If I'd found uh, a bit of wire, I could have set a trap round about a town while I was elsewhere heating up and looting up and going back and got some rabbit. If I found a bottle, I could have put that in a pond. Um, if I'd found some netting, I could have made a trap with that and put it in the sea and got some mackerel while I was looting and warming up elsewhere. I could have built a farm. It was raining, which meant I didn't need a bottle to find any water, so all I needed was some seeds and some 